Well, hello, thanks for watching and welcome to another video. I am doing voice over again because of the heat in our shop. And uh, this is gonna be another ring making video. And today we're making a comfort core style ring with a tr uh, triple laminated uh, stabilized wood blank. Now this, this method, it's going to be a little weird. I uh, I kind of went backwards and forwards on this trying to figure out if I could use the chuck only to make it without a waste block. But you're going to see that I do end up going back to a waste block. But first thing I've done here is I've taken my blank, put it in a chuck, and I'm going to drill out the center. Now, I typically drill it out with two different drill bits. This is a half inch, and then I'm going to use a three quarter inch. When doing this, you just want to make sure that your ring is not smaller than a three-quarter inch, because obviously if you drill it out and it's a small size, you would not be able to use that. So use a drill bit appropriate to the size of what you're making. Now, I'm using the Record Herald lathe, and I've got an SC3 chuck, just a simple four-jaw chuck, and I'm going to drill this out. I'm using a, a Jacobs chuck on my tailstock, and if you've never done this, it's a great way to drill pen blanks ring blanks, or anything else you need to drill center. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a really simple process. I'm just going to simply drill it through. Uh, you don't want to build up too much heat or go too fast. You want to kind of let the drill bit flow through. I'm running the lathe about uh, 900 RPM here. So you can see it cuts pretty easily. And I just use my hand there to hold the Jacobs chuck from spinning especially in the beginning, it'll want to spin or try to spin occasionally. So you just keep it there so it's firm. Now once, once I've drilled this first half inch hole, then I'll swap it to the three quarter. And all I'm doing in this procedure is I have a ring core that has a flat top. We call it the comfort core. Um, th what we're using today is a stainless steel from Turner's Warehouse. And we're essentially gluing that ring core into the block. So we want to drill it out to take out material. And we use a couple different sizes just for that reason. Take out as much material as we can without going overboard. And then we're going to use the boring head. And you'll see that here in a few minutes to precisely get our size down. Now... What I'm doing here is I've stopped this and I like to flip things around and I do this with pens too. I don't actually know that it does anything, but it kind of makes me feel like if it's going to be off one way or the other, this would even it out. So I don't know. What do you think? Anyway, this is a three quarter inch bit. So it's a pretty big drill bit and this is a size 10 ring. So the three quarter is close without being too much. So once I get through here, uh, I'll be pretty close to my size and I'll just have to fine tune it a little. Now, I mentioned earlier that normally I glue it on a waste block and go from there, which I should have done here. But this, if you watch this channel, I experiment a lot on it and this is no exception. I'm, I was curious if I could do the whole ring in the chuck, but then it hit me that I like to do a lot of turning on the waste block before I separate it. And how am I gonna do that here? So I suppose I could have put the ring core in and put the, the ring on a ring mandrel and turned it that way, but I don't like to do that with square edges, so I would either wanna round it or trim it. And in this case, it just didn't make sense, so. I'm just drilling it out here with the three quarter and you'll see in just a sec here we'll get to the waste block now the reason i do voiceover if i didn't mention it already is my shop is really hot uh, i'm in arizona and i only have swamp cooler and it's actually been a pretty wet summer for us so it is humid which means it is hot 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 so i've got fans running and you know swamp coolers and it helps a little, but not a lot, but it kills audio, so I can't really narrate while I'm doing it. Now this is my waste block. I just put it in my chuck, and I'm just squaring off the face of it. I've probably used this same block to make about 20 different rings. And 
Here I'm just using a tailstock, I'm sorry, a live center in the tailstock to give me a ballpark to get my center. Normally I would do this with a live center in a center hole, but since I drilled this out in the, the chuck, it doesn't make sense. So this is a really roundabout way to do this. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it this way. Uh, in a couple weeks, I'll have another video where I do a Fordite video, and that'll be, make a little more sense. So I'm just CA gluing this on with thick CA and accelerator. I put the glue on one side and spray the other side. That way, when I stick it on, if I hold it for 10 or 15 seconds, it's good to go. And then I just spray accelerator on it. So this is the boring head. This is... A very handy tool you don't have to have one but it sure makes it easier if you're doing very many of these and what it allows you to do is make micro cuts or micro increment cuts in your core so I've got probably a couple millimeters here to to make my ring fit and I can move this by rotating that Allen wrench you see in the picture there and I can rotate it a tiny little bit or or more than that at once so if I was just barely off like a quarter of a millimeter I could make that adjustment now I tend to make bigger moves and and go overboard sometimes so error on the side of smaller amounts especially when you're first getting used to this because you can take off a couple millimeters at a time which could be too much but you make your adjustment you rotate your tail stuck in rotate your tailstock out, and the nice thing is you have a clean square hole. You could do this with carbide tools, or, or even regular tools, I guess if you had a small uh, skew or something, but it's hard to get that straight, exactly in and out cut. So that's why I really like the boring head. I use it a lot in pen making, and it just makes perfect sense for rings. So if you are gonna make a lot of rings, I would highly recommend the investment. If you're only doing one no way so we can see here my ring is pretty darn close and I don't necessarily measure it to see what the size is or what my hole is I just move a little bit try it move a little bit try it so you could probably be a little more precise in your movements or have a, a plan in your movements but I just kind of like to wing it and I can make one of these rings this this way in about 20 to 30 minutes usually start to finish so it's not a lengthy process and even making these a little adjustments with the boring head you can still move pretty quickly but you can see the the dust it's not even really shavings because it's so small the dust coming off of there i'm just barely removing any material so there again cut test fit cut test fit so we're real close here and that's a good view of our blank we've got three stabilized woods that I laminated together. These were all scraps uh, from another project, but they're really cool, so it's a perfect ring blank. And we have a bunch of these as well uh, made up, so if you're interested in making a cool wood ring, this is a great way to go. But you can also make your own if you've got resin cutoffs, wood cutoffs, or anything like that. So, get my head in the way there but now I'm just test fitting make a little adjustment and I'm I'm moving a lot lot less now I think I was moving uh, an eighth of a rotation or even a quarter at most till I fit my ring in there so I'm really close here but uh, I just need just a tiny bit more now you want this ring core to be snug well maybe I shouldn't say snug you want it to fit nicely but you do need to have room for glue if you make it so tight that there's no glue in there, it'll definitely spin off. So there you see, that was about an eighth of a rotation. And there's just a little dust coming out. But back to the glue, you need a good glue surface all the way around your ring. So uh, make sure that your, your hole is not too big, but also not tight. Because if you have to force the ring in, you're gonna have a real hard time getting a good glue surface. And there we are. So I put it in, I kind of jiggle it to make sure it's not too big, it doesn't wobble side to side. It should just kind of slide in like it's floating real smoothly. So now we are ready to glue it in. I like to clean out the hole. Uh, you could use air or a towel, make sure there's no loose dust in there. Clean the ring off, 
Make sure you've got some grooves on it on the outside, which uh, you can either cut or sand. And then I just use thick CA. I'm using mercury CA, and I rotate it, and then I use the nozzle, which probably isn't the best idea, but I use the nozzle to kind of spread the glue around because I want it really flat and flush in there, and I want to push that glue or that ring into the glue. Now, you're going to get a lot of glue on the back side of this ring when you shove it in there, and that's okay. It comes off fairly easily, and you'll see that here in a little bit. So once I've got my ring put in, I'll hit it with CA because I want to set the outside, especially so it doesn't move. I don't want it to come out or uh, get crooked in any way. One other thing to keep in mind, especially with a laminated blank, is you want your ring to be positioned correctly for how you want the look to be. This particular one, I just want it to show all three woods fairly evenly, so I only cut the uh, depth with the boring head to, to stop it on that side. So that makes it easy. Now what you're going to see me do is I'm using a Easy Wood Tools mini carbide round uh, head with a negative rake. I like the negative rake on rings because it's far less aggressive and it cuts really well and really easily. You don't need to move material fast, so the negative rake is a safe and really efficient way to do it. So what I like to do, and I mentioned this earlier, is I'll cut down one side. So I'm cutting all that extra material up to the ring core. And if I bump my ring, it's a stainless steel, so it's not going to hurt it at all. And if anything, it'll just make it shiny. So I'm cutting that in there. I'm using my finger just to push the dust away to see if I've got to the edge. And then I can use the uh, negative rake or the detailer to cut down my material because... That looks more like a donut than a ring right now because it's really thick. The other thing I do, and I really love the Easy Wood Detailer for this, is I cut that little groove at the back of the ring, and that's where I'm going to cut the ring off of the uh, waste block. So by using the detailer, I can cut myself a little trough, and it makes using a flush cut saw really, really easy. And here I'm just using the square to take off a little more material. But you can see this actually worked out pretty well, and I've got the dark, the red, and the light wood fairly even on this. Now, if my blank was wide enough, I could actually make another ring, but this was just enough for, for one ring. So, like I said, use the flush cut saw to cut this off. I cut about halfway through and then give a little bend to pop it, and it usually pops right off. It'll uh, either pop the glue off or it'll take a little bit of the waste wood off, but it comes off real easily. And then the beauty is you can keep using the waste block by um, surfacing it and then just re-gluing your next piece on. I've probably used this waste block, there you go, popped it right off, for 20 rings by now. It used to be much, much bigger. But anyway, I'm done with that chuck. I'm going to put on my mini chuck. And here again was... I, I kind of was just trying things to see how the different chucks could work with this. And what I'm doing is um, loading the ring in a SC1 mini chuck from Record Power uh, from Turner's Warehouse. And I wanted to see if I could efficiently turn the outside of this ring. And it holds it no problem. And actually it turned it no problem. The, the hardest part is getting the ring exactly straight in the chuck because obviously there's nothing to index it to you just kind of have to eyeball it and it worked fairly well but I wouldn't do this again um, what I would do and what I typically do and it's much faster and much more efficient is I'll put my sanding head on and I'll hold the ring and essentially sand away up to the side of the core and that allows me to have a nice straight side and then I can round it with the tool on the ring mandrel so there you go, you can see it's kind of uh, square. We're done with that chuck. And now we're going back to the collet chuck with a ring mandrel. So you're seeing a lot of tools here, a lot of chucks and things. You don't necessarily need these. This was a lot of experimenting to see if there was a better way uh, to make the ring or a better way to hold the ring. And ultimately the way we do it normally is probably the fastest and the easiest and just makes the most sense. So here again, I'm using the detailer to cut the ring down to size 
and to give those edges a little bit of a round over. Now, one interesting thing, if you're familiar with the ring mandrels, they have a cut in them where the mandrel expands out. Now, you certainly do not want to get your tool caught on one of those cuts by bumping into the mandrel. However, if you raise your tool up just a little bit on your rest, you can have the bottom of the tool below the cutter head bump your mandrel should you get that close. You don't want to get that close, but if you accidentally bumped it, it won't, it won't catch. It'll just skip right over it. So I have my tool just a tiny bit higher than normal for that reason. The other thing is you see my camera's moving here. That's my swamp cooler blowing on my overhead camera stand. <laughs> and as much as I hate it moving for you guys, it's so hot I can't turn it off. <laughs> it's just horrible. So this is the, uh, the final shaping on the ring mandrel. It's funny we start with these big blocks of wood and end up with a micro amount of wood in the end, but whatever works, right? So here I am back with the uh, Easy Wood Mini with the round negative rake insert. It just works so easily. And my ring is pretty much done. Here again, I'm going to flip it over. And like I said, I don't know that it does anything, but it's just something I do. And I do it with pen blanks a lot. And I feel like I get a, a better, rounder product just in case there's any discrepancies in the way the mandrel sits or I guess the way my tool movement is by muscle memory or something. I don't know. But I like to do that, so do whatever you want. <laughs> as, as with anything, do whatever you want. But you can see that uh, the negative rake is cutting some nice little shavings off of that. That's stabilized wood, so it works really well. Now, I'm going to sand this with Abernet. I'm starting with 120, although I probably could have started with 220 or even 320 because this thing was pretty smooth. And if it was acrylic, I would have started with 600. So this is a kind of a stretch for me to start with 120. But I did, and it worked fine. Um, I'm doing kind of a, a unique finish on this. I'm actually going to finish this with something I haven't done on rings a lot, but I like the way it looks. So we'll do that on this one. Um, but you want to make sure it's nice and smooth. You can use the sandpaper to shape or take off any sharp, hard edges if you need to. And you'll see me with my finger a lot. And I'm just feeling the ring, making sure it's comfortable, making sure there's no tough spots or sharp spots. And so that's just what I do. And I move through this with uh, 120, 220, 320, 400, 600. And that works pretty darn good. So here I'm just checking the inside. Any glue that I had on the inside of the stainless will just pop right off because now that I've trimmed up to the sides, um, the glue doesn't really have anything to hold onto except the stainless on the inside and it's smooth. So it's gonna come right off. Now here I'm putting back on the SC1 chuck with our uh, Maker Select sanding plate. This is a super good tool for uh, ring making because I can write on my lathe, sand really delicately. I've got a pretty high grid on this. I think it's a uh, 600. So I can just gently touch it and smooth that side off just perfectly. And these are stick on um, discs, five inch discs, so you can change them out to whatever you want. I've got a couple different ones with different grits and it allows me just to really get the edges perfect, which I could do with my tool or my hand sanding, but this makes it a lot easier and faster and I'm all for fast. So if you want to check those out, they're Maker Select uh, sanding disc, and they'll fit on a variety of chucks. There's two positions inside the disc to hold onto it, so it works out really well. Now, once I'm done with that, I can pull this whole setup off. I'm done with this chuck, and I'm going to put the ring mandrel back on. I'm using the Beal Call It chuck here. Um, I can put that back on, load my ring back up, do any final sanding. Yeah, and I'm a dropper. I drop those Allen wrenches all the time for some reason. But I can do any final sanding. Uh, this is down, I think, to 600 here, and that's where I'll stop on the wood. I'll sand it while it's turning, and then I'll shut it off and hand sand, go back and forth, uh, cross versus around, and just kind of make sure it looks really, really good. Being that it's stabilized, to me, the wood is a lot easier to finish and sand because it's so stable. 
for lack of a better word. Um, there's not a lot of voids. There's not a lot of pits. There's just nice, smooth, hard wood. So it makes a really good ring for that for that reason. And boy, that, that wavy camera is sure annoying. <laughs> I'm going to have to try to fix that, but until it's until the heat is over, I, I'm going to have to terribly, uh, or I'm going to have to keep doing these terrible voiceovers for you guys, but it's better than nothing, right? So here you go, just a little hand sand, moving it by hand and going side to side, making sure I don't have any uh, tool marks or sanding lines or anything like that, which you shouldn't by this point when you're this high a grit, but it never hurts to take a look. So once you're done sanding and it's to your liking, uh, you know, you can wipe it off. You can use air, you can use alcohol, you can use mineral spirits, whatever you want. Uh, just clean it off, make sure it's free of dust. So I'm using Odie's oil for this. Now I do Odie's oil a lot on pens and I actually do it a lot on pens when I'm doing a matte finish that feels really good for holding a pen. This particular one, I'm doing an Odie's oil, but I'm gonna buff it a little bit, and so it'll have a little shine to it, but it won't be uh, a real thick, heavy, like plastic feel. It'll look and feel like wood, but it'll have a good shine to it. So I apply the Odie, Odie's oil, Odie's oil, <laughs> the Odie's oil. I let it sit about 30 minutes, and then I come back, I wipe it off, and I buff it up. So. By doing that, you can get a really cool finish. And if you don't like it, you can always sand it and put something else on. So this ring came out pretty good. Uh, here's some other examples of some glue ups I did. And hopefully you like this video and you can make one for yourself. So thanks for watching.